name of the one true living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I am one of those folk who pay attention to those small little reports which appear in the pages of newspapers. And I do this because you come across some of the most amazing things in those reports. One of these from a number of years ago reported the saga of a woman by the name of Helen Powell. Now she was in her 40s and she was childless and overweight and Helen ignored the continued swelling which was occurring in her abdomen. She brushed away disturbing thoughts of a growing tumor <clears throat> and attributed inner rumblings that she experienced simply to gas. One day she was stricken with pain, so severe she rushed to hospital. And there she gave birth to a seven pound baby boy, which I bet many of you have figured out before I came to this because you read those little tidbits as well. Now is that tale unusual? Well, of course it is. That's why stories like Helen's make the news. And yet unexpected births do occur to the wonder of any woman who has ever carried an active child and to any man who has ever watched life leap under his wife's skin. But only someone like Helen Powell, who had long abandoned hope of bearing a child, might be so oblivious to the signs of life within her. And Helen's story, I think, is just right for you and for me <clears throat> as we begin another and a new Christian year today, this first day of the wonderful season of Advent. Why do I think that? Because Advent is an expectant season. It's a season which is pregnant with the promise of coming life. Consider, on one level, Advent turns our gaze and our contemplation back to a saving life which came to us 2,000 years ago and to everything which, as necessary prelude to that, preceded his coming. But on another level, Advent turns us forward to return into the return and glory of that same saving life, to reign in peace over a creation which is finally as it should be. But on a third level, Advent turns our attention to the very present, our present, a present in which Christ comes to us soliciting our collaboration with him in being made clean and new and whole and in redeeming the fabric of our world. Therefore, Advent expresses the very character of the Christian community, by which I mean what? By which I mean this. We Christians are a people who are ever waiting, ever expectant, and ever longing. Ever waiting, ever expectant, and ever longing for what? For the life of Christ, which is now growing within us, to come to its conclusion, its fulfillment. Hopefully, some of us want this <clears throat> because we know it will glorify Christ and it will win others to him because of what they see and receive of him in us. And others of us, perhaps many of us, want this more because of what it will mean for us. It will mean the resolution of every conflict within us and happiness indeed. But for whatever motives we may want our likeness to Christ to be completed, we want it. And in our wanting and our longing for it, 
we can be more like Helen Powell than like couples who decorate nurseries in eager anticipation. Why? Well, let's go back to Helen Powell. Helen feared that something bad was growing within her, and she wished to avoid the possibility. How? By not facing it. Most of us who take the time to look honestly at ourselves and our society can appreciate that response. We know the fear of something bad <coughs> growing within us. And too many of us wish to avoid the possibility. And so too often we simply refuse to face and to deal with things. Further, Helen Powell knew the discomfort of her expectant condition, but fearing the worst, she dismissed the inner rumblings as gas pains. We too know the discomfort of our expectant condition while we may fight God in the enterprise of making us whole, of using us to improve the welfare of our world, of obeying him in some issue or another, yet our inner conscience is pricked and disturbed. An unpleasant situation. So we try to pass off the disturbance. We say, I can't do any better. God will cut me some slack or, well, everybody else is doing this. And finally, Helen Powell knew the hopelessness <coughs> of the barren. So do you and I. Whenever we do exert the effort to work with God to change us, so often our efforts fall short of our resolution. Selfishness, greed, pettiness, laziness are hard habits to break. As are within our world international hatreds, widespread starvation, and national resentments. When the growing is rough, or taking more time or effort than we would wish, our tendency is to throw up our hands and conclude, forget it. Now, that's an immobilizing situation. And to a situation like this, the season of Advent speaks. Its backward glance should quicken hope within God's people, which we are. Because in our history as God's people, we see God's saving acts time and again. God promised our forefather Abraham a homeland and countless offspring, and so it happened. God promised to deliver our forebears from oppression in Egypt, and so it happened. Then, returning later from exile in Babylon, our forebears cried, as we would have heard if we had it this morning in today's first lesson from Isaiah, O oh, that thou wouldst rend the heavens and come down. But so it happened. Because at Bethlehem in Judea, in accordance with God's promise, there was born a man-child to a virgin who in the natural order of things could not expect to conceive. And this man-child fulfilled all the prophecies of the one who would suffer and yet rise victorious, pouring out his own spirit upon and into everyone who would give him their allegiance. Two thousand years ago now have passed since that promise was fulfilled. 2,000 years, now populated with people who in the natural order of things could not have expected 
to become anything more than what they were before they gave their allegiance to the Son of the Virgin. But once they did give him that allegiance, they were on their way to becoming saints. And along their way, heaven touched earth through them. Helen Powell was a prisoner, a prisoner of fear. But with our many fallings and retreats and detours and foot dragging on our journey to God, too often do we consign ourselves to that self same cell. But it shouldn't be so with us who belong to God. For we who belong to Christ are always Advent people. And Advent's backward glance, falling upon the fulfillment of God's promises to save creation and us through a child born to a virgin, hung on a cross, <clears throat> and yet risen from the dead, that makes us prisoners, yes, but prisoners of hope. We are a people with a memory, a memory of what God has done. <clears throat> and since what God does is simply an expression of who God is, you and I can expect him to do again and to keep doing, even with us, what he has promised to do and what he has done and through all those who will yield him their allegiance. Advent's word to us, therefore, is never succeed. Its word is always persevere. At the end of faithful perseverance, in the struggle for holiness, we will find, as did Helen Powell, a lovely birth ourselves, finally restored to the likeness of him who came to us two millennia ago, who is coming to us in our present, so that when he comes at the end, we will be able to rise with him to glory.